Welcome to Inside the Ivy. It's Kyle Babcock on Sports Report Radio on the phone. This is a guy that's a great talent. I mean a great talent. The Cubs drafted him last year in the third round. Michael McAveen, welcome to Inside the Ivy on Sports Report Radio. Hey, Kyle. And thanks for having me on. I'm excited to share a little bit of this situation we got going on right now. Hey, Michael, before we get into who you are and a little bit about yourself, how crazy is this with spring training? I mean, with all sports stopping, you, I assume you're out of Mesa. Um, how did it, how did you get the word that basically baseball was ending for this short term? Well, so the day we had a day where it had been raining in Arizona, and so we had a day where just a handful of people had went into the facility. A couple of rehab guys, a couple of guys that had to throw off the mound. Um, and while we were all there, that's when the NBA had made its decision that it was going to suspend the rest of the season. And as soon as that started, talk uh, lit up around the locker room between the trainers, the players, and just pretty well everybody that was around um, about how this probably means we're going to be put on a hiatus too. But we weren't really sure what that meant. Uh, we didn't think that it was going to take that long. We were all told that we were going to have a, the weekend off uh, on that Friday, on that Thursday, and then they, they were going to have an off day, and we were going to clean the facility on Friday. And so we were all just spending the off day trying to stay busy with what we could do and stay safe. And we were all hanging out. We all, all of a sudden, everybody starts to get random texts that they got flights scheduled, and they're all like, well, I got a flight. I was like, wait, what? And they're like, I got a flight. I got a flight. And then next thing I knew, I got a text that I was getting a flight to schedule. Where was I flying to that we were leaving tomorrow, the next day? So I got, we got a little bit over the 12 hour notice before we were on a plane back after the MLB made that decision. Well, that's incredible. Michael, we were talking a little bit off the air, talking a, bit, a little bit about yourself, but why don't you tell our listeners and all our people on social media, tell us a little bit about yourself. We know you're drafted by the Cubs in the third round, grew up in Indiana, went to college at Louisville, but, but Michael, what kind of makes you tick a little bit? I mean, what 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 makes you the a pitcher and, and what kind of, how'd you get there and do you like other sports and, and, and just tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Well, I mean, I started playing baseball later than most people. I didn't start playing until I was nine years old. Um, and the only reason that I was brought into playing was because I had some friends that would uh, get, get me out in the neighborhood and have me play catch. And so had me playing catch with them, they were like, you you know, you throw pretty well. Why don't you just come out and play? You know, what's the worst that can happen? You at least get to hang out with your friends a little bit more. And I was like, yeah, no, that sounds great. I'll definitely try it. And I got my convinced my parents into um, signing me up that year. And it broke my dad's heart because he was a golfer and I was a golfer before then. Um, and then, you know, after that year, I just I sort of fell in love with baseball. Um, but I didn't pitch right away. And I didn't start pitching till the following year. Uh, I just did it on a whim. My dad, my dad ended up starting to coach me with a couple of one of my buddies couple of my buddies' dads as well, and they had us all pitching, and I ended up finding that I enjoyed that, and so I started taking some lessons and um, really noticed that that was what I was better at than hitting, and slowly but surely as I got older and older and older all the way up until high school, then it was, I was a pitcher only, I didn't hit, I was just focused on pitching, um, you know, I started to get recruited pretty early by all the Indiana schools. And my sophomore year, I initially committed to play at Purdue under Doug Schreiber and Tristan McIntyre, who was, who had in 2012 won the Big Ten Championship. Okay. Um, but then, of course, there was a couple of, couple of issues that came along with that and a couple of unsuccessful seasons following that in the rebuild. And Doug ended up stepping down and wanted to, you know, pursue other things and be with his family. Um, and so when that happened, I reopened my recruitment. And that's when Louisville and Vanderbilt and Virginia um, all came knocking. And, of course, being from Indiana and knowing the stature of a program like Louisville, it was a no-brainer sure. for me. 
Oh yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit of my backstory, just in baseball alone. Um, you know, I graduated high school with honors. I've since grad since I've been drafted, I went back to school this last semester, and I graduated from college with my bachelor's in sports administration. Hey, congratulations! Uh, that is that is yeah. awesome. Congratulations! I mean, that's that's very good. Congratulations, Michael. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm I'm really impressed with myself. You know, it only took three and a half years. I I grinded grinded my butt off during high school to get a couple of classes brought in, and then was taking classes at every single every single possible time that I could all the way through until this last fall. So, but yeah, no, that I mean that's just a little bit about me. I mean, that's, um, that's, that sounds like it's a pretty cool story. I mean, you grew up. Hey, let's talk a little bit. I mean, I just want to go into the list. You know, you started baseball at age nine. Um, so many young kids, you know, focus and sometimes they're pitchers and they, they're throwing a lot of stuff and they, they get Tommy John early or they have arm injuries early. How did you avoid those being specialized as a pitcher as like a young developing kid, you know, and, and you didn't get hurt as much or, or how did that work for you? You know, when I was younger, I always said that I had a rubber arm, that it was never sore I could throw any day, every day if I needed to. Um, I never had those issues. Uh, I wouldn't say that I did anything out of the ordinary. I, my belief with Tommy John is that you can work out and strengthen all the things in your arm to help delay. But ultimately, if it's in your plan, there's no stopping it. I've always thought that I've done a great job with taking care of my arm. Um, but I ended up still having it my freshman year at Louisville. Mm -hmm. And so, and I had a buddy when we were 11 years old playing fall baseball. He, that was when his elbow went. So I, right there, you got a 10 year difference almost wow. between me and him when he got it. So I just, I, I think it's, one of those things it's a freak it's a freak accident that you you can't ever be too prepared for and you just have to focus on your arm care as good as you can that's personally that's just how i see it hey michael would you prefer i mean a lot of guys come in and they'll you know through college and and then into the pros or even high school into the pros maybe a starter they turn into a reliever maybe a reliever turn into a starter middle relief i mean what's your preference what do you like to do i mean do you want to be a starter you want to be a reliever middle relief I mean, what's something that, that you like to do? Well, in college, I really got a niche for the bullpen, and I really started to enjoy it. Um, my, I was halfway through my sophomore years when I came back, and then by the end of the year, I ended up taking on the role as closer for Louisville, and then come the following year, I was able to piggyback off that and have a pretty successful year. Um, but just like any kid, you want to be the guy that is starting – when in game one or game seven of the world series and that's what that's what you want to do so for me start, starting's always held a special place in my heart um that's 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 personally what i want to do that's what i've expressed to the people in our organization um when i've been asked i think i think starting's starting's the role that has always been calling me since since i've been playing baseball um Michael, what, what's it like? You, you, you were drafted by the Cubs, um, iconic franchise. Are there are there nutritionists that you work out? You know that are there for you, or you know workout people, and and how do they surround you with the talent to help make you the best athlete and the best pitcher you could be? Well, the Cubs, I wasn't. It, it, it completely shocked me when I showed up. All of the different support staff and avenues that they had to be able to help get us better um in arizona when i showed up to sign and i was building up and preparing to you know for my assignment in eugene last year um they have the they have a great workout facility in mesa um and a strength staff that's uncompared to the rest that you know they're always hands-on they're right there for you answering questions helping you with your form and coaching you up just like you're the only player in there even though you're not and you're surrounded by so many people they make it a very individualized feel um with each and each person each person the same and it's the same that goes down the line with the nutritionist the mental skills the you know all the coordinators and the r d guys that do the analytical side and the video um the coaches 
and the front, I mean, the front office people, just everybody that I've run into, they're all there and all are so willing to help and embrace and have embraced me and everybody that I came in with so well. Um, that was probably one of the most impressive things is that they just really take time to understand you as an individual and not just see you as, uh, well, you were drafted in the third round, you were drafted in the fourth round, you were drafted in the 15th round. So we're going to give this guy more priority over this guy. Like it's no, everybody gets, everybody gets the same amount of treatment and the same amount of respect from everybody. That's really neat. I mean, we're kind of, I mean, we're kind of tight and we cover the Cubs and, you know, we, we kind of know a lot of those people and we've been out to Arizona. I mean, what a fabulous facility out there at Sloan and that training facility is just incredible. And, and we just love spending time back on the backfields back there. It seems, um, I, I think the Cubs in Arizona have the best facility out there. I've been told that um, it's it's just the best of, of, of anybody. I mean, but I'm sure that, you know, you, you probably appreciate it being out there this past year, just seeing what a beautiful facility that is out there. Oh, absolutely. And talking with guys of the past from Louisville who've been drafted to different teams and coming back and just hearing the different the different stories, you know, some horror, some good. And just being able to compare now what we have to those stories is just we are beyond blessed um, with with everything that the Cubs have put in place to us. They've really done a great job in keeping it a player's first organization. Michael, I appreciate you taking a little bit of time. I mean, Let's face it, you're a young guy, just new into the organization. I mean, we plan on catching up with you over the years. We love to follow the progress of a lot of young players with the Cubs and through the minor leagues. And, I mean, I'm sure we'll be talking to you a lot more. And, obviously, we'll see you in South Bend. Once you get to Myrtle Beach, we'll see you in Myrtle Beach. We'll see you in Tennessee. We'll watch you in Iowa. And we plan on, in the next three or four years, watching you make your debut at Wrigley Field one of these days. But uh, it's it, it's always good talking to young, positive great role models like yourself and, and and michael i appreciate you taking the time to talk to us here for about 10 minutes or so thank you so much michael i appreciate it hey no problem Kyle. i appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity